of my Lyme disease, which I really like to call Plum Island disease, which I think is a more appropriate name for it. <laughs> and, and, and I'm on a fairly high dose of um, doxycycline because um, my doctor, ha following the um, International Lyme Association's uh, guidelines, if you think you're having neurological uh, effects, that uh, 200 milligrams of doxycycline twice a day is what's recommended. So I'm doing it. And it, I am so sensitive to the sun, more so than I have ever, ever been um, in the past in any way. So I've been out in the sun. It seems quite sunny here for the last week, which is rare. And I have been so burned. Um, now I'm using an umbrella or I, you know, I'm covering my skin. And I'm not used to having to do this. But, and who knows, I don't know what it is in doxycycline that makes, uh, and probably some horrible thing I don't really want to know, um, it makes me so susceptible to it. But what I was noticing, and this is really where I was heading, <laughs> this long <-winded> response, <laughs> is that I burn, and of course I, it, I am on the drug, but I burn um, in direct sunlight, in diffuse light, and in reflected light. So right. it would be interesting to learn what people all around the world, what their experience is now, especially light-skinned people, or at least that would make more sense to me because I am for comparison. What is happening to, to us when we're in direct sunlight or when we are in the hazed light? I hadn't thought before until you were saying this um, that, that, that the hazing, the reflective particles, actually are intensifying the burn or perhaps changing the burn. And then we have radiation, of course, from uh, all the horrors of Fukushima and who knows where else. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I really love to know more about uh, what's going on with that for people, even if it's anecdotal. You know, I will tell you a, a real quick story, and then we've got a caller. Um, I've got a chihuahua who, when I was in the Arizona desert, she's relatively young. She's under two years old. Um, but when we were in the Arizona desert and they weren't spraying very much there at all, um, she would lay out in the sun, and it's pretty hot there. You know, she would lay out, the, out in the sun, and she loved to sunbathe. Um, the last four or five days that we've had here in Oregon, they, we have had no trails, which is very rare for us, but we've had absolutely none, and we've had pretty clear skies minus the haze that's in the sky. We do have a lot of haze buildup, you know, the reflective haze. And she um, will lay out in the yard within 10 minutes and less or less now. In the last few days, she's out of the sun, and this is a, a dog that loves to sunbathe. So, you know, just watching your animals, mm -hmm. uh, you know, can, can clue you in quite a bit. Rose, did you have something you wanted to say? Sure, yeah. Um, I'm just speaking with our friend Yado in Australia, and he's just put in a comment there to share with you. He okay. says that the plastic foods that we eat uh, mess with our ability to take in the sun. He said, eat more fruits fruits raise the ability to take in a bit more sun, um, you know, really important. Don't forget the sun isn't your enemy, it is your friend and, um, you know, darker skins we need a lot more uh, light than our lighter skin to, the, to, you know, carry the vitamin D3 that we all desperately need, our sunshine hormone. Um, don't, don't use these sunscreens, they're poisonous, I, I you know, adamant on this. I've been, I'm, an, I'm a gardener, an organic gardener. I spend a lot of time outside. Uh, I stopped even wearing sunglasses a long time ago because I realized the lie. You know, they're, they're taking away your ability to take in the light and we need this to heal. So, um, you know, there are certain drugs, of course, that if you're on, that you, you know, you can't go out there. Things like St. John's Wort, which is quite an, uh, it's a natural antidepressant. If, you, if you're on anything like that, of course, you, you are more susceptible to the sun. But, yeah, take on more fruit. Um, build your body time, your time up for, for the sun out there. As far as the, um, the particulates, yeah, they're a lot harsher now. I have spent, like I said, a lot of time in the sun. In 2009, they started piling this crap on us down here, suddenly we can't see the stars at night, we can't, you know, well this wasn't where New Zealand was at, they have been chemtrailing over us for, for a long time, but, you know, quite predominantly from about 2003, um, but 
um, you know, it, it, it really ramped up in 2009 and um, I have seen a huge change in what my body can take. So you know, you've got to take care, but if you're going to protect yourself and just get in out of the sun at midday, if you can't do that, then find some radiation clothing. There's plenty of that around now. Mm. Um, so but also the blanket, the grey metal blanket that gets laid over us, that, that just doesn't let any of the heat escape anywhere. And also, you know, we had this discussion last week, the aluminium in its powdered form, the aluminium oxide, is flammable. Therefore, this is why we're having, you know, wildfires everywhere. Um, this stuff's literally uh, burning our bush. So, um, in New Zealand? Mm, yeah, oh. we've had that here too. We have a heart facility down here. We have a couple actually, Superdome facility. We've got several. We're still digging. We're still finding these things. Everyone talks about Alaska, but, uh, you know, all you've got to do is see the arrays. They're everywhere. And they don't have to be large either. Uh, weather experiments going on everywhere. They're using a lot of the mountain ranges uh, for these things as well. So, And they seem to have the facilities, the heart facilities, out on um, peninsulas, out on point, you mm. know, that, that I guess, you know, it, it, it's easier to access with. Mm. But, um, yeah, that, that's it from me. Get more wow. fruit into your body, eat more natural food, stay away from that processed stuff, and then it's all just feeding the beast. And if you can get away from medications, then do so. You know, there's some wonderful, wonderful people around that information, it's all there at your fingertips. And you, you said you have Lyme's disease. Well, I have Crohn's, and, um, mm. you know, this this was diagnosed, um, you know, all in line with this stuff here. So yeah, everybody's yeah. battling something. And, and I have found getting away from the medications has just been absolutely fantastic. They told me I was dying, you know, 11 years ago, and I took their pills, I took their steroids for nine months, and all it was doing was killing me. So you know, taking the journey naturally since then. And, um, you know, more power to you. You think you're you're a wonderful guest, Bonnie. Really, really enjoying it. Oh, thank it's you. I'm, I'm enjoying it too. And, you know, I thought I was on for 45 minutes and I think I'm going on two hours here. <laughs> you <laughs> are. <laughs> we're kind of sneaky that way. Yeah, we're we're just... <laughs> very productive. Um, we were just so interested in everything you had to say. I'm sorry if that was an inconvenience. No, for you. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I, it's just it's a delight to talk to people who get it. And I mean, even if we don't get it exactly the same way, just to be, it's like what, my uh, my friends whom I've met through this, and now I'm thinking I may have two more. Uh, I call this my Sky Clan. It's like my family, my true family. Isn't I'm that amazing? One, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's so few out there, especially in my particular area where I live. There's just so few people that, you know, normal people <laughs> that get it. It's just so wonderful to talk to people that do. Yep, yep. Even if we don't thoroughly understand what it is we get, we certainly understand uh, the seriousness, seriousness of our condition. Um, I wanted to say one, and then I, I really do need to go, or maybe okay. you have to go too. Uh, but I wanted to say one thing that surprised me, um, and it's a, it seems a little tangential, but it might be useful to all of us to be, remember that um, someone else suggested to me when we when I had this crazy idea about the Sky Symposium that I engage with the artistic community. And we have now in our performance space here, we have a renovated barn, which is where the Sky Symposium is going to take place. And um, we have an art exhibit on the walls uh, contributed by area, even regional artists, who responded to the call, um, any any earth and sky paintings that they wanted, or it doesn't have to be paintings, children's art we have as well on the walls. And it became this like circle of, of uh, support from the artistic community. And most of the people who have their work represented in this art exhibit don't know about solar radiation management or any of this that we're going to be talking about. Uh, at least they don't know about it intellectually um, or by way of research. They may have noticed the sky is all askew now. 
but it was another way of engaging with the community, and it was revelatory to me because I'm always saying, look, look at this information, look at this information. I want you to see this. I want you to be awake to this. I want your help. And to have this whole group of people who rose to the occasion to support the Sky Symposium and don't even necessarily comprehend the science that's going to be exposed during the weekend, it was really wonderful. Wow. Was so loved. So I guess what I'm really trying to say is there are many ways to engage with people who can't necessarily hear how hear the news, how bad the news is, but they have a relationship with Earth in the Sky, these artists, these landscape artists, you know, their their whole joy in terms of their art is based on a relationship of the Earth and the sky and the, their their view, their you know, the horizon. And even it, sometimes they actually are drawing and painting the trails, the pluming trails, and I don't know what goes on in their mind then. Wow. Like, you know, yeah. So I mm. just, my thought is that there are many ways to engage with people, which was news to me. I was so, you know, fierce and fiery. Right. I, I love that. Thanks for closing with that, Bonnie. Sure. It was great. Okay. <laughs> and thanks go. for having me. Um, may I say one more thing, though? Absolutely. About, okay, if, if anyone is inspired to come to the Sky Symposium as a result of our conversation <laughs> uh, this evening, I hope that they will contact me um, to register only because I have no idea now how many people are coming. And a head count would be so helpful for um, the, the final week of planning. Um, so people could let me know by way of that email address, B-O-N-N-E underscore F-I-R-E at yahoo.com. Uh, I'd appreciate it. I'd love to have to know also that people were listening and close enough feel inspired to come. So, and thank you both so much. It's been a real joy. It's, um, I'm just grateful, so grateful. Thank you. You are very welcome. It's been our pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Bonnie. You're so welcome. Indeed, indeed. Thanks, thanks from us too, Bonnie. Heart to heart. And please, each of you, touch the ground for me in Oregon and in um, New Zealand. Will do. All right, thank you. All right. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> thanks so much. Bye bye, thanks. Bonnie. Thanks again. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, uh -huh. and that is our show.